I wouldn't recommend building your power amps on top of SharePoint, especially if you have strong security requirements for your project. I know it's free, it comes with your license, you don't have to pay additional fees for using power apps on top of SharePoint, but on occasion, free can become expensive, especially if you take into account how much your data security is worth. But if you don't have a choice, well, in this video, I show you some strategies and especially what not to do and considerations when building on top of SharePoint. Let's start by how to securing our Power Apps front end. So we have the same application, but in the left we have what we would call an admin user or can edit user. And here we have a user that can, on, can only read. So these would be the two roles that we are showcasing here. And you see that here, the end user can use these buttons while the read user cannot, can, because can only read. If we jump back to the editor, we'll see that in order to configure this, the most typical strategy is using the display mode of the component. We go here and in here we have basically a condition. If the security configuration for this user is can edit set to true, then the button can be used in edit mode, otherwise it's disabled. Normally what we do is in the formulas tab of the app, we have here these security permissions object, and this is basically a lookup to a SharePoint list where we filter by the current user like this. Now this list where we have this role configuration would look something like the following here. So we have a column for the user and then one column per each security role. And we have the can read and can edit security roles. So if I'm this user, then I can do both. But if I'm the power test user, then I see that I can only read but cannot edit. Well, if you know just a little bit about SharePoint permissions and how that works, you will tell me, hey, Andres, this um, security you're talking about, it's nonsense. It's just a lie because in reality, the user could really do those actions, edit or read. Regardless, you are just protecting the front end with the power apps, but not the data that is behind the scenes, the actual list. So if the user has access to this list because we give them the link or they find a link, for example, if they go to uh, the Microsoft 365 portal and they see that they, well, what's this list about that I have been using recently? I click and then I land here and then I say, hey, this is my user. Uh, let me add some edit permissions for myself because I feel like it. Well, then the whole invention just uh, goes to the toilet. And this is simple, simply because SharePoint Online, well, it's a document management system with some productivity add-ons on top of it, but it's not uh, thought, not, it's not designed for a true transactional uh, database um, designed for enterprise-grade solutions. It's not simply for that. Let's imagine one example very typical example, uh, an approval scenario. Well, I am going to submit an approval. So while I'm submitting the approval, I want, I want to have edit access to that request. But once I submit it for approval, then I should lose my edit access because now it's time for the my manager, for instance, to approve and thus they will have read and edit access to the request while I can only read it. Now, after the approval is done successfully, for example, then both of us lose edit access and we can only read the request because it's already signed off, so it's done. So before answering how to solve that particular issue or scenario, let's take a look at how SharePoint permissions work in general. So for any given SharePoint site, what we would do is go here and go to set permissions to configure and see what's the actual configuration for the current site. So if we go here, there are three security, let's say roles that are already here. These are security groups, the owners, the members and the visitors. And here we can see, well, uh, that they are named just after this, the same as the site. And this comes uh, by default when you create a new site, you will get these three groups and 
the owner of the site will be the one that you had set when creating the site and then the members additionally and then you can add uh, visitors if, uh, if necessary. Now, this is very simple configuration because anyone in, with the edit access can practically do almost anything besides mm, more in-depth configuration, but they can access all the resources, all the list, edit, delete, etc. configure the columns, whatever. So instead, what, what we want to go to is these advanced permission settings. Now here, things start to look older because this is a screen that comes from the old SharePoint on premise and here we can see more in-depth configuration. Here are the groups that we were seeing before and here we can see the actual permission levels. Uh, this is very interesting. So we are seeing here this is a SharePoint group and these are the permission levels and what are those permission levels? Where is this actually stated? For that we have to go here permission levels to understand what are the different permissions that are configured in this site and we'll see a surprise over here so these are the ones that come with the site to all sites pre-configured for us and if we go inside we will see what they are about but we can also create our own permission levels this would be the uh, what our role would be in sharepoint online let's say so here what we do is say, for instance, can only create role, for example. And here we will uh, take a uh, notice the granularity that we have here. So we can say, okay, you can create items, you can maybe edit items and view them, but not delete, for instance. So we can have more granularity on what we can do in a list or SharePoint library. List permissions, uh, they refer to both uh, list and libraries because behind the scenes is the same component. Now there, there's a catch here because this configuration applies to the whole site. So if I create a security permission level here, this will apply to the whole site. So really we are not solving much. We can only solve here, for example, if we want to give a set of users the ability to create new requests and be requests but not edit and delete them but this this is going to be static we once the user has created the request well they will be able to be with but we cannot change unless we manually or with a development flow do so change the membership of that user to a particular permission level so what else can we do because once you have a permission level then it applies to the whole site too meaning all the lists items document libraries and documents around all the site so what we can do is have more granularity at list or library level so for that we go here and we go to list settings over here very interesting what we see here let's take a this here in the corner manage parent this if we click here we will go to the previous global sharepoint site permission levels where we will see so let's click we will see here the groups members owners visitors because if we go back who is the parent of this list the site right so what we can do is break this inheritance meaning that then we can set special permissions for this sharepoint list or library so if we do that we'll have this alert over here and then we can just click and see that here now we have uh, unique permissions. If we want to go back, then we just click here, delete unique permissions, and then any custom permissions that we have set will be deleted. What means here is that if we are uh, about to create just a layer of security for this configuration list, then we would break the inheritance and create a role only for people to be able to read this list. So what I would do is I would Eliminate here the members and visitors. So remove user permissions here. All right, and then I will tell uh, grant permissions to deport this user. And here I would set only read or even restricted view uh, read permissions. This way, we will see how now I refresh. I can no longer edit these permissions over here. I cannot. I cannot edit them with this port as user. 
so this way we would solve the issue of okay yeah you can you cannot work with these buttons from the power app but if you access the list now i cannot edit my own permission. So that's already an advancement. Now let's see how we can break inheritance from the list. So this should be between the site and the list. But can we go further? Yes, we can go further. So we have the, the site, the list, and then the item. So the item can also have its own uh, permissions. So we go here to manage access for a particular item. If we go here to the three dots over here, advanced settings, we will see the same panel to configure permissions. So we go here to manage parent, we will go to the list. Take a look, the, the list with this special configuration that we have just set up. Let's go back. Now we are in the item level and this item will have the same permissions that we have defined in the parent, which is the list itself. But we can also here stop inheriting permissions and then have any custom permissions here as we wanted. For example, now, I can edit because I'm creating the request, but after I submit the request, then a Power Automate flow will need to automate this task of breaking the inheritance and disallowing me, so uh, disable me from editing this uh, registry, this list item. Mm, a little bit complex, yeah. If you want to see how to actually implement that, let me know in the comments and we can see that in another video because it's a more complex topic. But if you thought that you would get away with not paying the premium licenses and enjoying Dataverse, as I would recommend you to do. Uh, take a look at the SharePoint limits. This page, you need to understand really well what this page says, because if you're going to be building solutions on top of SharePoint, you need to understand the limits of the platform. So here, if we actually look at unique permissions which is the name for this uh, breaking inheritance method of uh, assigning permissions that we just saw we'll see that there is a limit of five fifty thousand per list or library and they recommend not uh, going above five thousand unique permissions so if you're going to have a list for requests and that needs approving and you expect to have more than 5,000 requests over time well I have some bad news for you you shouldn't use this method because it's going to break at some point instead move to Dataverse and you can see how to work with Dataverse in a future video that I will publish here in my YouTube channel So we've seen how to work with security roles in a campus app that works with SharePoint. We've seen how to secure the actual data behind it, so the actual lists used by the app. And we've seen the limits of the platform. So as a conclusion, if your project needs strong security, security is a really important requirement for your project, then avoid using SharePoint and move to Dataverse. And well, if the reasons have not convinced you, then think about ALM, about having dev test and prod environments where you have to maintain security configurations in dev test and prod SharePoint sites and the, the Power Platform environments as well. So duplicating the setup where the technology is also different and you cannot have automated ALM unless you have very strong skills with PowerShell. Basically, move to Dataverse because those extra bucks that you're going to pay in licensing are worth it. And now, just goodbye. Thank you for uh, watching till the end. Please subscribe, comment if you have any questions, and contact me on my website www.andresbiarge.com where I will be able to contact you directly if you submit your email in the forms that you will see there and then we can have a one-to-one -one chat and well you will also have access to special content that I will be releasing on 2025. Well thank you very much and see you soon.